everyone, and from Glamour for You here. In this video, I will show you my technique for the Argyle craze in four easy steps. I have a blog post on my website um, that I'm sure some of you have already seen. If you haven't seen it, then I will show you step by step in this video how to create the neat effect. All right, that's my sample. I am using Red Heart Super Saver in color Bright Mix. I chose this only because the colors are bright and um, more contrast. You can see the colors, they don't blend as well. So you can see if your Ar Argyle pattern is working. So first thing you do in when you get your yarn is find the color sequence. So you're going to pull out a long bit of yarn. Long, long, long. Until you start seeing, oh wait, there's blue again, there's purple again. Okay, so I think I, I figured it out, but if you haven't, then I'll show you another way. So my color sequence is blue, purple, pink, blue, green. It doesn't matter if the colors in the color sequence are not even. This one actually is not. The second blue is a little bit shorter than the rest of the colors. Um, but you want to have your segments of colors need to be at least six to eight inches. Um, the longer the better, but not over 12 inches. If it's a if one color spans really long, then your beginning, your width of your piece will be really long. If, and you do not want to choose colors that only have short, really short two, three inch segments. Those segments, when you work up a stitch, will only be about an inch and that will make it more spotty than Argyle. It won't create the Argyle look. So after you've pulled, try to find your color. If you haven't found it, then just start crocheting. Just start a chain. So you're going to start anywhere. It doesn't matter where. Tension is, is key in this um, technique and I'm going to show you real quick how I hold my yarn if you haven't seen my video how I do it already. So I have my slip stitch on my hook already. Um, here's the working yarn is on my left. I'm going to put my palm up, place the working yarn in between my pinky and my ring finger, turn my hand, place it in between my index and my middle, and then wrap it once around my index finger. This way when the yarn pulls through it I can open and close my hand when I'm working to stop it from pulling too fast and I can control my tension better that way. So first thing I'm going to do is start chaining. It doesn't matter how many chains it takes. Just keep chaining until you th think you found your sequence. If you have to stop and look at it, you can stop and look at it. Okay, so I think I'm there. So let's double check. So my chain starts with, you can see your sequence better now. Blue, purple, pink, blue, green. Then it starts blue, there's my purple, pink, 
blue, green. So I found my sequence. Blue, purple, pink, blue, green. So now I've chained. Blue, purple, pink, blue, green. There's my, there's the end of my sequence right there. So I'm going to take out all these chains till I get to right there. So this first chain, oh, sorry, one more. There you go. This first chain is the first color of my next sequence. So I'm going to chain through my entire sequence. It doesn't matter where you start. You don't have to start exactly on, it just happened to be I started on blue. It does not matter because you're gonna have leftover chains so these chains will not get used. The reason why is it takes more yarn to crochet single crochets or double crochets. So if it takes more yarn, your stitches, stitch width is gonna be shorter. So now, when I crochet my first part of the pattern, I'm going to crochet with single crochets and chain stitches, and it's going to end with chains left over because it takes up more yarn to crochet through this color sequence. So once you get to the end of your color sequence, the chain on your hook will be the color of your next sequence. So that's my blue. So the moss granite moss stitch says to chain in the fourth chain from hook. One, two, one, two, three, four. So there's my fourth chain from hook. So my very first stitch will be the first color sequence. The first color of the color sequence. So now the pattern calls for um, chain one. Let me scooch this out of the way so you can see a little bit better. Chain one, skip the next chain, single crochet in the next chain. Chain one, skip the next chain, single crochet in the next chain. Chain one, skip the next chain, single crochet in the next chain. I'm going to repeat that process until I work through another color sequence. So blue, purple, pink, blue, green. This is going to be my last stitch because there's the green and there's the blue. Okay, so don't worry about the chains, the base chain. Don't even look at those anymore. Blue, purple, pink, blue, green. I crocheted the pattern stitches through the entire sequence. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is, if I were to continue, each stitch would line up with each other, but they would line up every other row, because now my next, when I turn my row, because I'm working in rows, when I turn my row, the next color will be blue, which is way over here. So when I work the color sequence back this way, it'll be opposite because you turn your row. Then once I turn my row again, then we'll be back to being blue on this side again. So every other row will be, the stitches will match up. So this being the first row, when I come back, the green 
will be on top of these stitches and then when I start turning the blue will be on top of those. So rows 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 will be the same colors. Rows 2, 4, 6, 8 will be the same colors. So they will line up in even pooling. That is if I start here. Now I don't want to do that. I want them to be shifted over one so that means when I come back the shift will bring this green color on the next, the second row, third row, the green color over one and then this blue color will shift over one. So then it'll it'll give that that shifting. See how these ones are shifting in? These ones are shifting out. That's what gives the argyle shift. So in order to do that, I will pull out a set of stitches, which this pattern calls for single crochet and chain stitches. So I'm going to pull out my last single crochet and my last chain stitch. Now I'm not even anymore. My, my stitch sequence, my color sequence is not even anymore. So to continue the pattern, chain two, turn your work. There's my first single crochet. We're going to skip that and work a single crochet in the chain space. Chain one, Skip the single crochet, work single crochet in the chain space. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, work a single crochet in the chain space. Repeat that all the way across. Okay, so now I've worked my stitch in my last chain space, chain one, and this very, the chain two turning chain, you're going to work into that also. So the chain two space will be your very last stitch. Okay, so you can't tell if the colors are shifting right now because I've only done two color sequences yet and it's every other row that they start to shift. Okay, so chain two, you're going to repeat that same row, chain two, skip that first single crochet, single crochet in the chain space. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet in the chain space, chain one. Okay, so you can see this is the third row. So there's the first row, the second row, the third row. You can see how your color sequences are lining up every other row, but they're shifting. So let me work the rest of this row and I'll show you more.
So let's look at the purple right here. What's going to happen is these inner stitches are going to start shifting out and these outer stitches will shift in. If you look at the purple, there's my middle purples and now my next purple is not lined up here, it's over here now. Okay, and my next green, it's getting there. It's a subtle shift, so these greens will start, I think on the next row you'll see the green will be over here, so it'll be shifted over one. That's why you have to work at least 10 rows to start seeing the shift, because it's only shifting by one stitch. So when I'm working the rows, they will shift to the right. When I work, that's the reason why it shifts like this, or the, the color pattern works like this, is because these stitches are shifting that way. Each stitch will be one over to the right. Then when I turn, these stitches will be shifted one over the right. But on the front of the work, it'll be over to the left because you're turning. So it'll be opposite for every row, which is how you get a shift this way and a shift that way. Let me work up. I'll be right back. Let me work up a couple more rows so you can see and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've completed 10 rows and you can see the colors are shifting. The greens are shifting in and the pinks and purples are shifting out. Um, let me show you on my big piece here, when you work more rows, there's the, the purples and the pinks shifting out, and the greens are shifting in. Once, once they've shifted in, they will shift back out, and that's what creates the argyle effect. Um, the end rows, or the end chains, the extra chains that you have. Um, all you do with those is pull them back out. There's your slip stitch. I take a yarn needle and I find the, where is it? I find the end and I loosen up the knot. It is. So I loosen the knot up and I remove I remove the end out of that one. And then for every stitch I will remove the end. You're basically backing it up and removing the ends. And then once I get down towards the end here, towards the last stitch, what I like to do is open the loop a little bit bigger, put my yarn back through it one time, and then, oh, no, the other way. Put my yarn back through it and pull it tight again so it tightens up the stitches. And then I'll just be left with the yarn tail that I'll weave in and that's the finished argyle um, pattern. Um, my, I will link my blog post um, in the bottom and if you have if anybody has any questions you can um, email me at glamour for you at yahoo.com. Um, thanks so much for watching.